Hey, welcome everybody. It is the Friday, October 11th, one hour edition of Talk Back. And Talk Back this morning is brought to you by 123 Seamless Gutters, family owned and operated, serving all of Western Montana. Let them take care of your gutters so you don't have to. Call 406 240 2669, protecting the foundation of your future. Harrington Surgical Supply, where you can feel confident in their discreet and knowledgeable guidance on a multitude of products and medical supplies. Also brought to you by Phillips Janitorial both home and business cleaning. No job too big or small for the professionals at Phillips, 406-260-6617. And finally, by Y West Storage, out of the Y on Two Smokes Way. If you need storage, here's their number, 406-510-0590. Y West Storage, making room for you. The views and opinions expressed on TalkBack are not those of the staff, management, or advertisers. Welcome aboard, everybody. It is a br- uh, it's a beautiful Friday morning, and the Nick Christensen is right over there. Good morning, Mr. Nick. How are you doing? Good morning. Good. All right, and we always kick things off on Fridays with a visit with our Missoula County Attorney, Matt Jennings. Matt, good morning, sir, and welcome. Good morning, Peter. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we had a, a pretty moderate week in Missoula County this week. We only filed 12 felony complaints, and that's... Uh, about the third lowest that we've had for all of 2024, and so we love to see that. Folks are out uh, behaving themselves. Unfortunately, about seven of those were violent crimes this week, and that is a little bit high. And I, I keep breaking these down every week because we see these certain patterns or we try and track whether there's a trend. And a couple of years ago, we were having a big explosion in property crimes and uh, a lot of felony DUIs, meaning four or more and things like that. And so we adjusted some of our practices to take those really seriously make sure that uh, people weren't falling through the cracks. And we've maybe seen some results. I don't mean to take credit for that. There's always things with the economy and police practices and and other things happening in society. But uh, we are seeing a little bit of a drop-off in some of the property crime epidemic, that I would call it, uh, that was going on from about 2021 through some of last year. And that's good news. But we are seeing some violent crimes. And to account for that, uh, we actually added a sixth special victim unit prosecutor to our office just this last month. And if you go back about 10 years ago, we didn't have any dedicated prosecutors that were only working on sex offenses and domestic violence. We, we had those spread out throughout the, the office, but it meant that we didn't have enough time to focus on individual and specific training. And we, we created an SVU team about 10 years ago, and it's steadily grown over that time. And now almost half of our prosecutors are dedicated to either domestic violence or sexual abuse or crimes against children. And so those are always a focus in our office. They have a reduced caseload, they have specialized training, and they make sure that they're providing the services to victims that they need as they navigate a complicated criminal justice process. So that's always been some of our focus, and we continue to watch those violent crimes. But luckily this week, uh, we we only had one family violence offense, but we did have four sex crimes, and that's uh, quite a bit. And so we... uh, We're going to keep tracking those trends, make sure that we have resources that we need to serve our victims, and uh, hold their offenders accountable. Now, Matt, uh, Nick reported on on one story where an individual was held on a million dollars bond, uh, and uh, that kind of made my ears prick up a little bit. So uh, that's rather unusual, wouldn't you say? It it is outside of a homicide setting, but I think that indicates the severity of an offense, uh, how the judges are viewing things, and risks to the public. So anytime the bail is set, the court's really looking at a couple factors, um, you know, criminal history, the severity of the current offense, flight risk, and basically whether they have other things that can be, you know, monitored in the community, whether there's drugs or alcohol or things like that. And so when you're seeing a really high bail, that means the judge has assessed all those legal criteria in the state of Montana and thinks that, they should be held in jail, but if they get bailed out, there should be a real big stick hanging over their head in case they try and flee. And what we do then is we revoke their bail, and either a bail bondsman tracks them down and brings them back, or they lose a whole bunch of money. And that's uh, often posted by friends or family or themselves, and so there's a pressure to make sure that they're complying so they don't uh, lose out on that. But even if people do bail out, we have other things to keep the community safe. We have GPS monitors. We have alcohol and drug monitoring systems. We have a pretrial supervision program. And, and we make sure that uh, just because someone gets out that they aren't posing another risk to uh, their individual victims or the public. Now, obviously, they're innocent until proven guilty. But nonetheless, once charges are filed against somebody, there are certain protections and limitations that go into place. You bet. Well, Matt, it's always a pleasure talking with you. And thanks for all the information. We appreciate it, sir. 
Thanks, Peter. Have a great day. And the same to you, sir. We're going to come right back, and we are going to be having City Talk today. And, of course, uh, the, the big July uh, event, uh, the big wind event. Is, has it been named? Does it have a name? It wasn't Hurricane Missoula or anything. But anyway, Morgan Valiant is joining us uh, this morning. We're going to be visiting with him. He's the Associate Director for Ecosystem Services with Missoula Parks and Rec. And we're going to get, get an update on all this tree situation. And it's really quite eye-opening. So, uh, And the phone lines will be open, by the way, as well as the KGVO app. We prefer you'd use the app because of the phone problems we're having. But uh, it is arable. So if you don't have the app, Download it, and uh, uh, all you have to do is just go to the, the App Store and hit the download, and you'll have the KGVO app forever. So we're coming right back uh, with, uh, with Morgan Valiant and Ginny Miriam for City Talk right after this. In a world of complicated cars and wallet-draining repairs, Gomer's is here to save the day. They offer top-notch pickup trucks. We are back. This is Talkback. Uh, 721 is our number. 1-800-568-5309. Of course, we'd prefer if you could use the uh, KGVO app because the, the phone is a little fluttery right now, but it is usable. And we just want to say welcome to uh, Ginny Miriam, Dir- uh, Communications Director for the City of Missoula. Good morning, Ginny. Good to have you. Good morning. And Morgan Valiant, always a pleasure to see you, sir. Great to be here. Thanks, oh, Peter. All right. So uh, everyone's... Now, the storm that we had on July 25th, hasn't it was wasn't big enough to have a name right i mean <laughs> or a title or whatever but i i mean internally we've been kind of calling it tree mageddon but um <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, I'm really glad you're here because we're going to talk about trees today. Uh, I know that was the focus starting July 25th and onward uh, with the phalanx, if you will, of, of trucks carrying tree debris to all the various. And what, what amazed me was the rapidity, if you will, the, the way that Missoula came together. And, and the city agencies and the county agencies and the state agencies, even the federal agencies came together and, and really got a handle on that. Uh, so there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, of confusion going on. Yeah, 100 percent. And, uh, you know, I think the thing that really helped us more than anything was just our community. Uh, we've had um, the opportunity now to work with uh, folks that respond to large events like this. And their whole job is to manage debris and coming in from other communities, they have said, we are just amazed at how quickly Missoula cleaned up its streets and got that debris out and got back to close to normal. Um, they were just amazed. They said most times uh, communities don't respond this way. And so a, a real testament to the public that took it on their own to help their neighbors pack up that debris and get it to those emergency debris sites. Now, I know you have some numbers you want to share with us because you and I were, were visiting uh, before the show started. Uh, just just uh, when you look at the statistics involved with the number of trees and, and, and the, 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 um, the scope of the disaster for us, it certainly was. Yeah. Um, you know, July 24th uh, seems like a long time ago. I think a lot of people... Uh, might not even remember the wind event, but uh, for those of us that are involved with the emergency response and the storm response cleanup, um, you know, work hasn't stopped. Uh, we have been going block by block uh, throughout the entire city limits, uh, inventorying damaged trees, looking for broken hang- hanging limbs up in trees. Took us about six weeks, uh, a real testament to um, all the folks that pulled together to do that inventory. Uh, And we are entering in um, kind of the final phase of our storm response cleanup, which is actually treating all the aerial hazards. So those hanging limbs that are in trees or those trees that were so damaged that they need to be removed because they're going to fail and are a hazard or won't live over the next few years. And we are sitting as of this morning uh, with 5,811 public trees that are out there that need to be treated um, in, within the city limits. Now, when you say need to be treated, what do you mean? Uh, that is, you know, some of those trees are just someone needs to show up with a bucket truck, fly up there and remove a broken hanging limb that is uh, that could, you know, fall at some point and and all the way to a full removal of that tree. Now, when it comes to removing trees, uh, is it 
Now, again, I'm, I'm not a forester like yourself or a tree expert, but when you talk about removing trees, are you talking about just cutting them off? Or are you talking about actually digging them up and getting the roots and everything? It, no, it's just cutting them off. And so, you know, at, at, at this phase and using the, the FEMA resources that we have for reimbursing this work, uh, it's really about risk and hazard mitigation. And so removing the hazard. And so, um, you know, you would you'd take that tree from a standing dead spar or a tree that's half broken off and just turn it into a stump. Okay. Um, and then we'd come back later to treat those stumps. All right. Now, wh- when, when you talk about treating a stump, uh, I, I, forgive me, I'm, I'm totally <laughs> ignorant about this. Yeah. But even though my middle name is Gardner, it's hard to believe. <laughs> oh. but, <laughs> <laughs> but what is it? Uh, Jenny's going, oh, this guy. Yeah. Anyway, so so tell me a little bit about how, how you treat a stump. Yes. Besides, but you might be polite to it, of course. Well, but. and so the majority of these trees are in our boulevards and public right of way. So right. think about those trees in front of your house that are next to the street. And um, so uh, we don't want to leave that stump in the right of way for any longer than we need to. Uh, and so we'd come in and grind it out with a stump grinder and backfill it with soil. Um, and then. Uh, like if, it was never there. Like it was never there. Um, and then. Our, our hope is to, and a uh, normal standard practice is to come back and replant trees where, where it's appropriate to replant. All right. Now, when it comes to replanting trees, obviously that's going to cost some money. Uh, probably things that weren't uh, put in the budget uh, thinking, you know, we're probably going to have a wind event sometime and we're going to lose a lot of trees, so we need to replace them. So that is something, that's an expense that the community is going to have to bear. Well, yes and no. Um, Or are we going to get help with that? uh, Yes, we are looking at several different sources for grants. Um, You know, one of the things, uh, because our community is under both a state and federal disaster emergency declaration, it does open up other pots of money for us to apply for. And so our hope is that we're going to be able to bring in those resources to pay for replanting. Um, One of the tricky things, um, you know, we typically uh, within our urban forestry program, we're replanting or planting on average 80 trees a year. Um, We've got about 600 trees that need to be removed. And so that's um, 10 years worth of planting um, that we we need to address. And so we don't currently have resources within our um, urban forestry program budget to tackle all of that. and so finding this outside sources and these grants are, are really where we're, we're focused. Um, and we've just started uh, looking into those. We don't have any applications out there yet. Um, our, our big push over the next three months is to just deal with the, the public safety hazards, the real public safety hazards that are still out there uh, in our streets and right ways in people's yards. Okay, we do have our phone lines open, and uh, we, of course the KGVO app is, is available to you. If you have a question or a comment for Morgan Valiant, uh, this, this is this is the main tree guy. So uh, if you have a maybe a story you want to share about what happened to your your property and, and that, that sort of thing, uh, just uh, give us a call, 721-1290 or 1-800-568-5309. Uh, or you can uh, use the KGVO app, and we'd be more than happy to pass that message along. Ginny, you were, uh, you were, did you want to add it? Okay. We're gonna, we're... I will. Not yet. Okay. That's good. Well, I'll tell you what, we are almost up against a break. We'll go ahead and take it right now. 721-1290 is our number. We're coming right back. Morgan Valiant is our, our guest. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. This is Talk Back. It's City Talk, our special guests in studio. Of course, we have Ginny Miriam, Communications Director for the City of Missoula, and Morgan Valiant, who's Associate Director for Ecosystems Services with Missoula Parks and Rec. And uh, they're the ones that have been going throughout, uh, throughout the area, throughout the, specifically the city, uh, ever since July 24th, when we had that, uh, that wind event and so many trees went down. And of course, we all lived through all that. And now... We're coming out the other side, and uh, I, I know that uh, the, when the governor came, uh, we had applied for and received uh, federal federal aid. So has that aid arrived, or is it is it coming in in spurts? Or how, how how does that work? Yes, that yeah, that aid is actually on a reimbursement basis, and so we have to reimburse to get, and that covers seventy five percent of our, our our effort, and so we do still have match that we need to make. Um, so we have to spend the money first. We have to spend the money first. Okay. Yeah. So save your receipts. One hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we do have uh, uh, Beck. Is, I'm sorry. Go ahead, yeah, Becky. Becky's on the line. Becky, good morning. You are on with Morgan Valiant and Ginny Miriam. Go ahead, please. 
Yes, thank you. So I am a gardener, and I'm wondering um, if you're going to chip up all those leaves and branches and if gardeners could get those wood chips for their garden. Yeah, uh, we are going to chip them up. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they are not going to be available um, for the public. Uh, part of the way that we track storm response and storm debris and get that reimbursement from FEMA is to also track the debris. And um, one of the contracts we have going right now is with uh, someone to come in and grind up all that material. And part of keeping the cost low was actually – uh, you know, I'm putting quotes in the air here, selling that material to the person that's grinding it. So they are part of their contract includes taking that material and then using it uh, to produce wood products. Um, and so uh, that said, our Garden City compost facility does uh, pretty frequently uh, provide uh, chip materials for just exactly what you're talking about. And so I, I do think that's a good resource to, to go to. And that's something they do regardless of uh, storm response. Is that, or who is the company that's going to be getting and selling these chips? Could I get them from? It's a company called Terra Firma, who is doing the grinding operations right now. Um, are, they, are they local or are they? They are not local. They are out of uh, Jackson, Wyoming, and uh, are up here just for the chip contract. We just put out to bid all of our arborist tree work. And so we are going to have, um, within the next few weeks, uh, just crews upon crews upon crews of uh, arborists working in our boulevards, pulling this material, chipping it, and taking it to Garden City Compost so that we can track that material from cradle to grave, um, literally. And, and so okay. that material will start to generate and be developed over the next several weeks. And so um, that is uh -huh. material that's not being sold to Terra Firma and leaving town. Okay. Uh, does that help you, ma'am? Yes, thank you very much. All right, and thank you for your call. We have Al standing by. Al, good morning. You're on with Morgan Valiant and Ginny Miriam. Go ahead, please. Oh, I just had several uh, questions, Been, I guess I'm Snoopy. Uh, can you give me a cost on these chippers that uh, the city or the county is renting, and how many chippers are there? That's one of the first questions. Yeah, so the, the, the tub grinders that they are using right now to deal with all the debris that was collected over the first month and a half of the storm response, uh, I believe the contract, I don't have it in front of me, and it's not one I'm managing, but was uh, around $390,000 to have them come in and process that. I want to say there is somewhere around 80,000 cubic yards of storm debris that they're processing. Um, we do not have costs on the chippers that are going to be moving through um, our neighborhoods because we've not contracted with those arborists yet. Uh, the second question would be, uh, I'm a Larchmont golfer. The fence line to the west of Larchmont, uh, the chipper seemed to quit on Monday or whatever. So uh, can I assume the chipper uh, broke down? <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. That is uh, a unit that uh, should be going all day long. Uh, they did have um, a mechanical breakdown uh, and I, I think our, just got it resolved and should be up and running again. Uh, they also had to do some um, just mobilization. I think they just moved to that site here recently. So I think there was a little bit of setup time. And this might be my last question. There's been a, one of these, I call it a a chip truck, uh, a semi a chip truck, been over there. Looks like to me, it's awful dirty stuff that they're putting in. But uh, where are they taking it to? I'm assuming it's going over to Idaho to uh, 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 some sort of a pulp mill in Idaho. Is that correctly? Uh, just about 20 minutes ago, I come through the intersection of Reserve and South. And a big chip truck came from the fort. It probably came from the Larchmont area, and it was headed up towards the interstate. Uh, where is that going with the chips? You know, I think they're, they've got a few different spots they're taking it to. I do believe it, a lot of it is going to Idaho uh, to be processed <laughs> into product. And, yeah, those chips are, um, I mean, not a lot of trash in them, but, you know, every part of a tree that you could imagine is running through those tub grinders, including uh, portions of root wads, uh, leaves, all small sticks. And so it's, it's pretty decent material, but, um, you know, it's not a, 
the kind of quality material that you'd want to bark mulch your landscape beds with. Um, and so, um, yeah, there's a little bit of everything in there. Do you have an approximate uh, dollar amount that the city or the county is uh, selling each one of these big chip trucks? How much? How many? Yeah. Uh, how hundreds? much? Are we, how much is the city gaining from uh, from them taking this material, or or are we paying them to take it? Uh, they they are a part of their contract is trucking that material off site, um, and so. Um, because they're able to sell some of that product as marketable product that did reduce the contract cost. But yeah, it's that general grinding contract, which I believe is around that three hundred and eighty, three hundred and ninety thousand dollars. So oh, uh, you, is, is that three hundred and eighty thousand outgo from us or income to us? Outgo from us that mm-hmm. we will get reimbursed uh, you know, up to seventy five percent from FEMA for. Gotcha. Hey, thank you, sir. No problem. Thank you for the call, sir. With that, we're up against another break. We would love to have some more calls from you folks. Uh, we're we, uh, Driving past Larchmont, is, it, it's almost a tourist attraction because you drive by and here's this incredibly high, 30 or maybe 30 feet high mound of chips. And then over on the other side, there's still all the, the debris that has to be chipped. So, you know, there's a before and after picture all you can get it right there it's quite an operation it is indeed and uh, i bet it's really loud <laughs> it is you definitely want hearing protection yeah, uh, yeah you, you don't want to be doing it at four o'clock in the morning no, yeah anyway no. we're, uh, it's good, but to, to scare the golfers yeah. we're, we're going to come right back with uh, more of talk back we'd love to have some calls from you our guest morgan valiant he's with uh, missoula parks and rec and we'll be right back after this Okay, we are back on Talk Back, and we have got a couple of uh, caller questions. Nick, what, what's going on? Uh, we have one caller question. They wanted to know, uh, is any of the material that's being chipped usable for playground servicing in the city? Unfortunately, no. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting, and you know, I, I'm not a yeah, pra- you know, play- chips, chips aren't just chips. Well, right? I'm not a playground specialist, <laughs> but I have learned a little bit a little bit about fall zone material, and the wood fibers that we actually use in our playgrounds are engineered wood fibers. It sounds super fancy, but it's not. They just have a special piece of equipment that makes these perfect little chips that don't bind together. They stay nice and loose and cushiony. Um, and so, uh, yeah, you've got to you got to buy the right type of chip for that kind of uh, application. <laughs> so there's a market for chips, there chip, is. chips that can be rolled and, and fallen apart. That's right, engineered okay. wood fiber. <laughs> yeah, there are chips, and then there are chips. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. Some cost more than others. All right. <laughs> You know, there's a there's a commercial in there somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where it is, but what the heck? Okay, so um, uh, where where are we right now? Uh, as as you leave today, where are you headed? What kind of uh, projects do you have ahead of you today? Yeah, so um, you know, really, our urban forestry program has been almost fully committed to uh, this inventory that we just completed and getting these contracts out to deal with this next phase of work, which is going to be the longest phase. Um, I mean, we'll have 90 to 100 days of cleanup and treating trees. Uh, When I leave here, it's running back, and we are actually preparing for a press conference this afternoon to really start to roll out more resources for the public to find out more information uh, about the work that's planned. Oh, go ahead, Jenny, Miriam, please. (laughs) I did want to... Just put in a pitch um, for people to check their local news media. Right. I, we are going to yes. be chatting with reporters. One of which you're on afternoon. right now, by the way. <laughs> One of which we're on right Everybody now. Everybody here gets a gold star this morning. That's yeah. right. Go ahead. This is a little. Yes, thank you. Um, and we do expect that you'll be able to see on television news and newspaper news and website news um, more details about this. We also have on the city website, if you go to missoulaparks.org slash storm. You'll be able to see complete information and details about this project. Excellent. All right. So uh, obviously we have we have a long way to go. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, basically, you know, we, have the, we have the big event and then you had the initial uh, emergency attack, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, trying to get uh, keep people safe and remove things from harm's way. And now, where are we in that uh, in in that particular uh, uh, time frame or that continuum? Yeah, you know that that first few weeks, as as in with any emergency, you're really focused on hazards and uh, getting services back online. And so, folks might have remembered 
losing power for a long period of time or several days having yeah. to go to emergency ice and water stations um, and uh, not being able to drive around town because streetlights were out and trees right. were blo- tree debris was blocking roadways. We're past all of that now. Uh, we're very much out of triage mode. Uh, we moved out of that mode several weeks ago and mm-hmm. are into um, really critically thinking and using our data to, to quickly and efficiently move through this next phase. That next phase is treating almost 6,000 trees um, in about 90 days. And so um, that's a colossal amount of work to how, do in a very short period of time. How many people are, do you have on staff to do that? Uh, we have three. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, we will not be doing this with uh, city staff. Um, uh, one of the great things, um, and uh, you know, I, I would say if there is a silver lining in any kind of an emergency um, a disaster response like this is by having our, our state resources and our federal resources available to us, um, we're going to be contracting out a lot of this work. Um, you know, our our, our, our pretty meager urban forestry budget would not, I mean, this is 10 years worth of work that needs to be approached uh, and we're trying to do it in 90 days. Um, because we have those that resources to hire contractors to do that work, our city staff, hopefully over the next few weeks is transitioning back to all the other work that they should have been doing or had planned to do. And so we can start to get back to normal and hopefully by January, this is, fully behind us. Right. But, but of course, by January, we're right, right smack dab in the middle of winter. Yeah. And- uh, we're, we're hoping the wind doesn't blow uh, again uh, for the next 90 <laughs> days. So if anybody is out there listening and can make that happen. That'd be yeah, yes. Uh, I'm sure that there are several people out there that are fiddling with their, <laughs> their scientific instruments. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, this, this is absolutely fascinating. And, and so as, as, we, as we continue on, the federal and state monies, they've been allocated uh, do uh, when do we have access to those, or is it as uh, per use? Yeah, as per use, I I believe, and I'm. Um, and how much did we get? <laughs> y- you know the the uh, and I I am not the expert on this, but I'll tell you what little I know. Um, you know our our uh, very early on in the event, we did hit the two mil mark, which did qualify us for federal assistance, and that really came about from the. Uh, uh, damage to our power grid uh, and Missoula Electric Co-op specifically. Um, we are probably uh, looking at around another $2 million worth of arborist tree work that we're going to be doing over these next 90 days. And we just advertised those bid packages this week, and we're hoping to get those uh, back. Uh, and then we will be deploying crews and crews and crews of uh, certified ISA, um, International Society of Arboriculture, uh, certified arborists out there to remove these hazards that we have in our inventory. Did you say uh, agriculture or ar- <laughs> arboriculture? Arboriculture. Uh, yes. like, that, yeah. is a, that is a new one. Yeah. Well, I li- <laughs> you learn something new every day. Oh, uh, yeah. I, li- I like that. I like learning new words. Uh, there you can put that on the license plate. Yeah. I'm an arboriculturist. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to come right back. Uh, phone lines are open, by the way, if you have a question for Morgan Valiant. He's the associate director, by the way, for Ecosystems Services at Missoula Parks and Rec. He's here to answer your questions about all that we've gone through since July. And, of course, we're still driving around town seeing the effects of that storm and will, I'm sure, for quite some time. So we're going to come right back after this time out. We're back. This is Talk Back. Phone lines are open at 721-1290. And, of course, we would prefer, if you could, to use the KGVO app and message us. So we'll be happy to message, uh, use that message and pass it along to our guest, Morgan Valiant, uh, with Missoula Parks and Rec. So we were talking during the break about uh, all sorts of other things that, that you folks are, uh, are are involved with. For instance, the challenge, if you will, as you begin this, this you know, trek throughout Missoula, to, to find these damaged trees and to try to deal with the public who may have uh, a special attachment to them. Yes, and I, I mean, I think that's one of the great things that I love about this line of work is, you know, working with trees and recognizing that they're living organisms that people form these long-term relationships with. I mean, there's some really well, we good... We planted that when my kid was born. Yeah, right? yeah. really good feel-good stuff there. And uh, we really approach that tree that is growing in the public right away in front of someone's house as a partnership with that individual landowner. And so 
you know, we say uh, part of what we do in the urban forestry program is, I mean, we are working with every individual landowner within Missoula. This storm, um, as with all natural disasters, <laughs> doesn't discriminate. It hit all neighborhoods equally. Uh, we've got damage across the city. Um, when we have our arborist crews moving through to do to remove these hazard limbs and do tree removals, they are going to be posting 24 hours in advance that they need to have people um, not park near these trees so that they can get in with this heavy equipment and do this work. Um, I'm not going to lie, it is going to be impactful. As they are moving through neighborhoods, some areas, like certainly the Slant Streets and University District, got hit especially hard. Um, you know, it may they may have heavy equipment moving, and it might they might only get through ten blocks uh, right. in a day. And um, I just really uh, know that our citizens uh, that live out there and the neighbors uh, overall are very supportive of this work. But I I do want to just throw it out there that uh, uh, you know folks need to be extra considerate and recognize that this is work that needs to be done to really protect them to protect the public and to protect our, our our city coffers all we really have to do is look back and have a little bit of a memory if you took photos of, of what happened around your own property with trees coming down or perhaps falling on a garage or on a vehicle or whatever and 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 then look now and see the the, the difference then i'm sure that attitude changes oh 100 percent. and you know i one of the things that we um have to manage uh, within our program is risk and liability. And when we as the city know that a risk is out there, we have obligation to treat that risk. And right now we got 5,811 uh, hazards that we know about. And um, if one of those trees fails or a branch falls uh, and hits someone's car or does damage, uh, the city is liable. And that is something that we do we do pay for. And so um, this is public safety. This is protection of our, our taxpayer dollars. This is getting back to normal business. And that's going to all happen um, within a very short period of time. One of the things we've learned, Dr. Peter Kolb is a, is a regular guest oh, yeah. on our show, and uh, he's a tree genius. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just enjoy working with him. But one of the things he, he told me was, especially because he works at the university, and, and he said, there are so many trees around the university the, the, that particular variety of tree should not be there mm. uh, because it, uh, it, in a windstorm, it's going to come right down or it's in the wrong place or it's the wrong time because, you know, it, it, it doesn't do well in our type. Of, but there it is. Right. Right. And so this storm basically laid bare, uh, especially in the university area, the trees that were weak. Well, for sure. You know, and um, I, I think that one thing that was unique about this event is regardless of the health of the tree, I mean, we had a ton of healthy trees fail too. Right. Um, when you start getting 80 to 90 mile an hour sustained winds, uh, it's going to damage. It, we, we have not really been able to discern uh, differences between species of trees as, as, as far as damage. It was really where that tree was located and how hard it was hit by the wind. Gotcha. All right. So, Nick, we have a caller question. Thank you. Yeah, a caller wanted to know, he said that he's uh, noticed some, he's a renter and he's uh, elderly, and he noticed that there's some tree limbs that look like they're pretty dangerous and that maybe need to be cut down or cleaned up and that he let his landlord know about it but hasn't heard anything back, sent pictures, everything. He's wondering if there's another resource he's supposed to use or who he should maybe notify because he is concerned about those trees. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, it's kind of a big answer, and a lot of it depends on where that tree is located, whether or not it is on private property or public property. If it's on public property, there's a pretty good chance. And so that is the boulevard uh, adjacent to the street, um, and every street has a public right-of-way that varies in width. And so um, one thing that we are going to be rolling out here in the next day is a online interactive map that shows all of these points that we have within our inventory and folks are going to be able to click on that uh, point, see pictures of the tree, see pictures of the hazard. Um, that is what we are contracting out. I think that is going to be a really good resource to look, to go to first, to understand, is this tree already in there? Is it a public tree? Um, if your dot's not there um, and you feel that it is uh, a public tree, um, please contact uh, us at Parks and Rec and we will, we will verify uh, if it is in your private yard, uh, it really does fall. The responsibility uh, for a private tree falls on that private property owner. So that would be the landlord's um, 
responsibility. And and when it comes to uh, 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 trees that fall on private property, that's where your insurance company comes in, right? Yes, and um, and <laughs> depending I'll on the damage, by saying I'm yeah. also not yeah. an, an, an yeah, insurance yeah. expert, but um, but you've been talking to a lot of them. If <laughs> if if you do have a known hazard in your private tree and it fails and causes damage, you can be liable and your insurance may not pay for it. If you don't know that the tree is damaged and it falls and fails, um, it's it's more and you know it's it's the insurance will cover it uh, in most cases. And everybody has different insurance. But knowing that you have a hazard and not dealing with it does raise a level of liability um, that wouldn't exist under a normal act of God, like the initial windstorm or right. that kind of stuff. Well, we do have responsibilities as as, as citizens uh, of, of, of Missoula City and County and, and a responsibility to our neighbors, you know, to, to try to uh, he'll help keep them safe uh, if, if something that was in my yard is now in their yard. Yeah. And I, I do want to just throw it out there um, because I'd, I'd get slapped back in the office if I didn't say it. But um, this is not just doom and gloom. I don't want to make it sound like trees are huge liabilities. Trees are also our number one way that we can um, buffer our community against hot weather, reduce our energy costs on, uh, on, our, on our houses, uh, increase our property values. Trees are incredibly valuable. Um, and so, uh, you know, it is it is uh, hard when we see a, a, a storm like this impact so many of them. Um, but uh, this is not something that we should uh, and just not plant trees because we don't want to have risk and liability. I would imagine an event like this would would put in focus how important trees are. And that as going forward, that uh, especially when those, those trees that had been in the yard for 40, 50 years and now they're gone, there's an opportunity to plan something that will last for a lifetime. Well, yeah, I, you know, I've always been a, a fan of the old Chinese proverb that the um, best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. Right. Uh, the second best time is now. Gotcha. All right. So our guest here in the studio is Morgan Valia. By the way, the phone lines are open. Uh, or if you have uh, a question, you can use the KGVO app. We'll be happy to message that over here as well. So we're coming right back after this one-minute timeout. This is City Talk, and our guest is Morgan Valiant with Parks and Rec. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back on Talk Back. We have about eight minutes left. If you have a question for Morgan Valiant, uh, we're talking about uh, what happened back in July and the after effects and the cleanup that is continuing right now. Now, Ginny Miriam, you had you had a point you wanted to make. Please go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say something about homeowners insurance, which is I'd encourage people. This is a good time to look at your policy. That's why they call it hazard insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, talk to your insurance agent if you can't understand your policy, which a lot of people can't because of the way they're written. Um, we've had people calling the mayor's office in the last couple of months saying, um, I'm looking for some help because a tree fell in my yard. The tree is enormous. The arborist bill is going to be very big. My insurance will not pay. So some policies, if your tree falls on your house, will pay for your house. But if it just falls in your yard, you may not be insured for that. So you might just want to Take a look at it and make sure you're covered, particularly because, you know, we never used to have wind in Missoula, and now we do. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. I, I, I just, the, the work that you folks have done has been, has, has really, really been magnificent. I mean, the, 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 especially the way uh, the entire community seemed yeah. to come together at once and uh, you know, differences put aside, you know, the turf if you will, turf wars put aside. Everybody was working together because it, it was a it was a genuine disaster for our little community. It's mm-hmm. nothing compared to what's happening in Florida, North Carolina, but for Missoula, Montana, th- this was the big one for us. One hundred percent. And you know, I, this was a record setter for us. Um, one of those records you don't want to ever <laughs> <laughs> surpass. Um, but you know, back in the day, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, I've I've only been working um, in this field for twenty years, and uh, this is something that we are seeing happen more frequently. I mean, twenty fifteen was a large event, uh, two thousand five was a large event. Um, this was the first one that tipped the scales over into a, a federal disaster emergency. Yeah, and 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 of course, when when that happens, you 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 begin to discover. 
the um, the the way that government can work, governments, if you will, can work together, city, county, state, feds. I mean, the, the, this was a, a full court press. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, the first few weeks, it was. I was just. Um, it was heartwarming to see the the number of folks that just showed up to help. I mean, we had state resources from the DNRC. We had Missoula County, City of Missoula, Clark Fork Coalition came in. We had to close the rivers for a while. Fish, Wildlife, and Parks came in. I mean, every uh, Forest Service came. I mean, every entity that was local that was any anywhere uh, closely. Re- impacted by this or affected uh, came out to help. And, and it was also it was also uh, neighbors helping neighbors. Uh, uh, people, especially if they had elderly neighbors uh, next door, first thing they did, once the, once the wind stopped blowing, to go check and see how they're doing, right? We could not have done it without our public and those neighbors. Um, the cleanup response was, uh, it was essential uh, to have uh, folks checking on other folks. That's something that we do really well. Uh, the half of our inventory that we're working on right now was all collected by trained volunteer, like crews that were canvassing neighborhoods. And so folks have continued to come out. Missoulians continue to come out uh, to help with this kind of stuff. So Morgan Valiant, we have about four minutes left of our time together. Let, let's let's hit the high points again for those who may have just joined us. Uh, some, some of the numbers involved that, that you're dealing with right now that uh, people would just, their eyebrows would go up, really didn't know it was that much. <laughs> Yeah, so we have just under 6,000 documented damaged public trees in our right-of-ways and parks. Um, always, always look up. Still a reminder, uh, before you park your car under that boulevard tree, look up. Um, there's no neighborhood that does, has not been affected by this storm. Um, we will have, uh, within the next few weeks, crews moving block by block through every neighborhood with heavy equipment to deal with this um, final phase of uh, storm response. And so uh, folks need to, if they're interested in learning more or finding out what trees are on their block that are going to be affected, we are going to be releasing an interactive web map that is also going to allow people to track the work. So as those points are resolved, you're going to see daily changes to the map as crews are moving through areas. Please pay attention to no parking signs. Please be nice to those crews that are out there um, doing the work. Uh, are, is, I don't want to use an analogy, but I'm going to do it. We're going to rip the Band-Aid off here, and we're going to try to get all these hazards taken care of within 90 days so that we can get back to normal. And uh, that is going to be another big uh, ask of the community to just pull together and help us through this, this did final you, phase. Did, did you find it was, it was really something almost miraculous, the, how few people were actually injured by this. There was a couple of teenage boys that were trapped underneath a, a power pole, right. and, and that made a lot of news. But as far as I know, uh, th- there, was, there was lots of damage, but very few injuries. We got uh, really lucky. Uh, I did see some pictures of an urban deer that got crushed, but I, I think folks are okay with that. <laughs> um, and uh, But yeah, we got really lucky. And you know, I think it is kind of crazy to think about. I mean, we're uh, it's going to be six, seven months of cleanup, and this was a forty-five minute wind event. I mean, it was forty-five minutes that are causing millions of dollars of damage and seven months of uh, of work. So uh, put your put yourself in Missoula, Montana, and then look at. What's going on in Florida? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Nor, you know, North Carolina, Tennessee, uh, uh, Georgia, y- you name it. Uh, we're we're talking years and years of mitigation. Yes, and 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 forget about you know you know urban trees. I mean, we're we're talking mountainsides falling down. Yeah. So well, a hundred percent. It really does put it into perspective and makes you. You see the silver lining and how lucky we actually are. What do you What do you enjoy? We've got, we've got about a minute and a half left. What do you enjoy most about your work? Uh, you know, I, I really enjoy what we're doing right now. I mean, I think it, it, it really does um, feel good to get out there and help neighbors uh, get the information out. Um, you know, the other thing that I think that a lot of uh, municipal employees and county employees have that federal employees and states don't have is that we work in our community. We are the neighbors helping neighbors. I mean, and that, that, that gives a certain sense of uh, pride that um, I don't think you you get in all branches of government. And and the nice thing is you, you had a lot of uh, up close and personal one on one communication with citizens that it would never have met you in other in other instances. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and um, 
Yeah, that and, which is great. I mean, and you know that is the one cool thing about the urban forestry program is we do meet everybody everywhere, all the neighbors. Because if you got a tree out in front of your house, Jenny, we're, there, and, we're and, there partnering with and, you. Any final words from Jenny Miriam? No, I just I love what Morgan is saying about. We always say that the government that does the most for people is the government that's closest to the people, and we are right there. Yeah, <laughs> and you and, can and you were as well. I mean, you, you during that event, you were on right the there. Phone and yeah, we right. are we are right there, and we really enjoy doing it. I mean, it's hard work, but and nobody wants a disaster. Well, uh, thanks to you and your crew, and thanks to the city uh, for for uh, being on the show and letting letting folks know. We appreciate yeah. it. Thanks so much, Peter. Okay, Mr. Mr. Nick, what's coming up on Monday's fabulous show, sir? Uh, we'll continue tree talk with Peter Kolb and Sandy Perrin and talk about gardening and stuff like that, too. All right. Full two hours. As we get to, into the fall, and I'm sure there's all sorts of different things that they're going to be discussing with us. Hope you'll join us. Go Grizz! Coming up at, uh, at the homecoming game tomorrow against Northern Arizona. Bye-bye.